everyone, my name is Brandy. I am with Brush by Brandy and you guys are back here for another weekly tutorial on my YouTube channel. So this week we're going to be working on this piece behind me. And this was actually split into two tutorials and that's because we did the tops on these in a resin pour and that process deserves a video all in itself. So if you go to my channel, you can search resin and you'll find a few videos on how to pour these faux marble resin tops. That's a beautiful look. These are going to be bathroom vanities and that resin is going to keep these completely waterproof to be protected in a bathroom environment. So um, there's actually two pieces that are getting the same finishes and that's because these are going to be two vanities in the same home for my customer. This one's for the master bath and then I've got another one for a guest bathroom that's a smaller piece. So you'll see two pieces throughout this video um, and we're going to do kind of this weathered wood technique. Um, and it's a little bit exaggerated this time because I used some waxes to kind of exaggerate it, but we're gonna use some color wash techniques, a dry brush technique. We're gonna do some stenciling for this little pop inside the doors. Um, all around this came out to be a very interesting piece. It's a beautiful finish and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. Here's where we started on this piece. It's a pretty traditional buffet. My customer snatched this up from my unfinished inventory on my website. All right, I'm also going to apply slick stick to the body of my piece only. This piece is gonna be done in grays and neutral. So I'm gonna take my slick stick. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some into this dish here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tint it. And when, you, when I tint my slick stick, I use very little paint, just enough to get it to slightly closer to the color that I want. So I'm just going to take a spoonful of This is Dixie Bell Caviar, and I'm going to turn this into a gray. It's going to be a very light gray, but it's closer to the colors that I'm going to be using than the stark white. It will be easier for me to cover the gray version of the slick stick versus a stark white. And it's so little paint that I'm not altering the formula. Um, I, I make sure to always keep it under 10% at least, um, if not far less than that, probably under 5% there. Uh, to just mix in that, that spoonful, and instead of a stark white, I've got a nice medium gray there. This one had a really shiny factory finish on it, so I went ahead and gave it a scuff sanding using my surf prep sander. I just went over the entire body with a 120 grit to take down that sheen of the finish. This is probably overkill to scuff sand and put Dixie Bell slick stick on, but I'd rather go for a overkill and be safe than sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and apply two coats of Dixie Bell Slick Stick, which is a gripping primer over the top. This piece of solid wood shouldn't normally call for Slick Stick, but again, I'm going to go for overkill on this one. I'm going to be layering grays and browns for a mix of neutrals on this finish. And so I'm going to start my base coat with a neutral um, in French linen. And that's because it's kind of in between a gray and a brown. Let's call it a grayish. Two coats of French linen, I let them dry for 24 hours and now I'm ready to start layering my colors over the top. We are going to create this weathered wood effect over this piece, which I have a base on here that is my Dixie Belle French linen. And the next color I'm gonna be using is Dixie Belle Coffee Bean, which is this deep brown. And I'm gonna take my Dixie Belle Mini and I'm gonna do a color wash. So when I do a color wash, I, um, I tend to um, dilute the paint on my piece. Another option would be to take your paint and actually dilute it in a cup of water. Um, and that is just personal preference, but I just go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of water to my piece. And I'm going to brush on a really thin streaky coat of this coffee bean. And I want to keep it kind of streaky. So that's okay. I'm going to keep it wet. I don't want this paint to dry. So literally, um, a color wash is washing your piece in your paint color. If the only thing you had to wash a piece with was paint, this is how you would do it. Put it on and I'm going to be wiping this paint back off. And so I'm making sure I add a whole bunch of my water and this extra streaky coat. All right, once I've got this fairly evenly covered, I'm going to make sure that I've got it nice and wet. And then I'm going to take a rag and my rag in this case is just a t-shirt and I'm going to kind of bunch it up. And I like when it has these kind of wrinkles on the front of the rag, because I'm gonna use those to keep some interest in my white marks. 
Now all along this piece, my white marks are in a horizontal motion, so I wanna make sure that I'm staying going horizontal as I wipe the side. My first inclination is gonna to wanna to be to wipe vertically, but I wanna keep these marks consistent with the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna plant it and I'm gonna pull it back. Now that's a little bit too much paint left on here, so I'm gonna get it wet again and I'm gonna wipe that one. And I love the streak marks that this leaves. So you can do this with any two contrasting colors. And it's a really pretty effect just to get this kind of strie effect. Strie meaning these stripey marks that I'm making across my paint. And I can leave as much or as little of this paint on as I want. And I want it to be kind of inconsistent where I've got spots that are heavier and spots that are lighter. Um, I like a little bit of variation in this look. I'm just gonna get these wet again, make sure they're not drying. I'm gonna turn my rag because it's getting a little bit saturated with paint, so I turned it to a different side. All right, and I like this look right here. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and let this set up. That was a pretty thin coat of paint and I wiped just about all of my excess off. So it won't take very long to dry. And while that dries, I'm gonna come over and I've got this molded detail that I'm gonna go ahead and give the same look to. So same thing, I'm gonna take my brush and a little bit of coffee bean. I'm gonna douse this with some water. Make sure that you let your um, base layer of paint Dry really well so that when you're dousing it with water, I'm not going to pull that undercoat of paint, which is my French linen underneath. And I'm going to make sure that I dig this coffee bean into all of these moldings. All right, all the way down to the bottom, I've got this entire column, made sure I've dug it into the moldings. This, piece, this look is really pretty, especially on pieces that have a lot of molded details because it's going to pick up on all those molded details. Now I did tell you I wanna make sure and wipe horizontally, but because this is a molded detail, it's got so much intricacy, you don't really notice which way I wipe. So I'm not particularly worried about it over here. And so my color wash on this molded detail almost acts like a glaze. And it's just going to settle into those low points just like that. And then any water that I got onto the side, I'm just gonna go ahead and correct that and wipe those streaky marks back in to this side. Just like that. All right, let's come back over to the side. I've had a little bit of time for my paint to dry. And my next step is going to be done with some Dixie Belle Manatee Gray. So I've taken my premium chip brush and it's got even dried paint on it, so it's a little bit crunchy right now, but I kind of like that because it's going to leave extra brush strokes. And I'm going to work this in roughly thirds because I don't want my paint to dry before I have a chance to work it. But I'm going to brush on. It's kind of a combination between a dry brush and a color wash. Because I'm going to give it this really kind of intermittent finish like that. Let me show it to you guys up close. Very streaky and I'm gonna wipe this back. So I'm gonna take my same rag. I'm actually gonna turn my t-shirt inside out so that I'm not wiping the brown across. And make sure that paint is nice and wet. And I'm gonna pull back. This kind of streaks, softens those streak marks. I don't want a full dry brush. Just like that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and continue and do the same step on this spot below. Breaking it up just helps me work in smaller areas so that my paint doesn't dry before I have a chance to get to it. Keeping that nice and wet. It's really streaky brush strokes. So you can kind of understand why I like the little bit of crustiness that's going on with my brush right now. It actually really works for this. I'm gonna go all the way down and go ahead and finish this side up. 
And this look is all about the layering effect. And it's also all about keeping your wiping consistent. So as long as I wipe in the same direction each time, I'm gonna get those consistent white marks. And connect my gray right up here to the last pass that I did. Make sure that those are seamless. All right, and when I'm done, that is what my side looks like. All right, let's do the same thing, and I'm going to catch this up, this molded portion up to the side of my piece while this paint sets up a little bit. So I'm just kind of streaking this gray paint right over the top with a very light brush stroke. And again, this is the only portion that I'm doing vertically is this molded portion. And that's just because it has so much moldings on it that you don't really notice which way I wipe. And then I'm gonna make sure that that's nice and wet and I'm gonna take it back off. All right, that was a fairly fast step. And my last step that I'm gonna do on this look is gonna be with Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. Last step with paint anyway. All right, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Drop Cloth and another one of my Dixie Belle Premium Chip Brushes. I'm gonna dip it right into my drop cloth paint. I'm gonna lay it off on the side of my container so there's very little paint on my brush. And I'm gonna do a dry brushing technique. So I want these to be kind of those smooth brush strokes though, not a full dry brush. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. That just adds a little bit of softness to the brush strokes. So they're very wispy and thin. All right, I'm gonna refill my brush a little bit. Same thing, I'm gonna dip it into my paint, but then take it off onto the edge so I barely got any paint on my brush. All right, I do like some of these spots where I've got a little bit heavier on the white and then it streaks into the brown or the gray. I love the variation in this look. So I, don't hesitate in making my All right, and I'm going to carry this right on up to the top with a little bit of water. And the water just softens the brush strokes from my dry brushing effect. All right, and I feel like I got a little bit too much white right here, so I'm just gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe that back. And it stays in the streaky effect that goes right along with the whole side of this piece. Just anywhere I feel like there might be a little bit too much white. All right, but I love this spot. I've got a little bit more of the drop cloth here. You can see the coffee bean. I've got my French linen peeking through underneath and then some streaks of the manatee gray in there. It's beautiful color variation. When I come over here to this molded detail is where you're really gonna see this dry brushing effect. So I'm gonna take the same, I have not added any paint to my brush, and I'm just gonna hit the very high points of this molded section. All right, and I'm gonna add a, go ahead and add a little bit of paint, lay it off on my floor. I've got cardboard on my floor. I'm going to add a little bit of water to go ahead and soften those brush strokes. All right, and that little bit of white really, really, really set off these molded details. Doing a little bit of horizontal just so I catch the horizontal spots as well. Oh, 
all the way down to the bottom on this piece. All right, when we come back, we're going to accentuate this with some waxes. All right, I went and washed my brushes out, and that gave me a little bit of a chance for my paint to set up. I'm going to go ahead and accentuate this with some waxes. So what I'm using is Besting Wax in Brown, and I'm just going to use a fine tip Natural Bristle Artist Brush. I'm going to take my Besting Wax, and I'm just going to ride all of the details of these moldings right here. This is a really pretty portion of this piece. I want to make sure that I bring this out. And I'm going to smudge it out a little bit. I'm just following the outline of all of these with my Natural Bristle Artist Brush. And then I've got a little bit of moldings around the sides of my piece that I'm going to go ahead and accentuate the same way. So I'm going to use a smaller natural bristle artist brush and I'm just going to outline the details of this molded detail down here. Now this piece has a fairly flat front on it so I want to take advantage of any of the details that I do have and I really want to bring those out with my waxes. So I'm just using this fine tip brush and I'm just going to put some dark wax into all of the low points of these moldings. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the wax detail on these moldings, but let's go ahead and show you how I'm going to do the waxes on the sides of this piece as well. So anywhere I've got where I've got these kind of dark streaks, I want to accentuate them with some waxes. I'm going to take my Besting Wax in Brown. I'm going, going, going crazy. I'm going, going, going crazy. I'm going, going, going crazy. And here is the front of this piece after just the paint and the waxes have been added before my hard work goes on. You can see how the beautiful streaky finish in that paint looks with the little bit of waxes along the edges to accentuate it. It's going to be a beautiful piece. One of my favorite things to stencil with is gilding wax, and gilding waxes give nearly no bleed through underneath your stencil. They come out with super clean lines. So I'm starting out with my stencil from Dixie Belle. This is the Greek Key stencil, and then I just used a little bit of 3M Super 77 spray adhesive on the back side of my stencil. I'm going to place it down on the back side of this door, and then I'm brushing on my gilding wax using a natural bristle stencil brush. With the gilding wax, I don't need to be super cautious about how I apply over the top of the stencil because it's a thicker formula. So I'm just using a, a circular motion and applying it over the entirety of this stencil. My favorite part is when I get to pull the stencil back. Look at those clean lines. You can see the sheen of the metallic. This is going to be a beautiful detail. Um, I do have a little portion at the bottom that my stencil was too small for, so I'm just going to find the repeat and I placed my stencil back down. I didn't need any more adhesive and I just filled in that section. I'm going to reinstall these doors, but let's pay attention to this hardware. Um, I needed my hardware to be kind of a bronze color to match the hardware in the bathroom that this is going to be installed in. And so I just took and I cleaned them really well using a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water. And then I sprayed them in a flat black and a bronze spray paint. And then I came over and gave them a clear coat of lacquer. This hardware is going to wear really well. I'm super happy with how they turned out. I did end up hitting them with a little bit of the bronze gilding wax to tie them into the body of my piece as well. I framed out the doors and the drawers, a little bit of moldings these had with some bronze gilding wax, and this piece is almost done. 
Let's talk a little bit about staging for this piece. So I want to tell you a few things that go through my head when I'm choosing staging objects for my piece. Number one, I want to show you a little bit of my staging area. This is behind the scenes. It's not a huge wall. What you actually see in photos is a small section of my workspace. So you don't have to have a huge area available. I started out staging my pieces uh, on my garage door and that worked for a clean white backdrop. And then I upgraded to using um, a set of bifold doors that I would fold up and put away. And that gave me a different backdrop until I had a full staging area. So when I chose staging objects for this piece, I kept in mind that it's going to be a bathroom vanity. And I'm looking at this white marble top that it has and it felt very spa-like. And so I like this piece. It brings in the softness of a spa-like feel. It's very dramatic. I picked up this canvas off my local Facebook marketplace. I think I paid $10 for it. Um, I pick up canvases when I see them for cheap or free, and I choose things that are a little bit dramatic that evoke emotion. So I can feel what she's going through. So I look for that when I'm looking for canvas art. Um, stuff that has feeling to it, emotion to it. Um, a uh, canvas with people in it. Abstracts are great. I look for a variety of colors. In this case, I loved that the pinks kind of brought in that spa-like feel, and so I brought that in in my florals. I usually use florals in just about every piece that I take photos of because people love florals. They make them feel happy and warm and welcome. What do you give when you give a gift to someone? You give them florals. And so I use a floral in most every picture I take, whether it's just some greenery or an actual floral like this. Um, and that one is just in a teapot that I got from a thrift store. And over here, another thing I like to do is I like to tie my hardware color in somewhere else in my staging. So I used bronze on my hardware. I pulled out bronze in my candlesticks. I have a few different color candlesticks, um, natural wood. I have the bronze. I have a silver. Um, and then I can tie in my hardware to whatever color I'm going to put up on the top. So I make sure that I do that. I like things in groups of threes. So I've got uh, three different heights here one two three I think it gives nice symmetry and balance it's simple it's not over cluttered it tells people a little bit about what this piece is going to be used for and you can almost envision it in your own home and that's the goal with staging you can really see the details of this finish the layered grays and neutrals um, came out really pretty I'm thrilled with the foam marble tops they are perfect they're going to be waterproof in a bathroom setting with the resin on top and the inside of the doors. I don't know if I could pick a favorite part of this piece. It's got to be between the tops and the inside of the doors, though. The body of this got sprayed in two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide. That's going to make it extra durable to be used in a bathroom setting because Dixie Belle Gator Hide is a water repellent top coat. Got my hardware and my doors back on and I'm all done with this one. That's a wrap. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can find links for everything I used in this project on the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.